Uh, let us begin our service with a prelude for ingathering. This is You Got Friend in Me. Yep. By Claire and Dad. By Claire and Dad. start the morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our community worship for the U User Charlottesville. My name is Greg Townsend, and I am serving this morning as worship leader. I am glad to welcome all of you into this virtual sanctuary. Our physical sanctuary was built in 1950 on hilltop land, acquired by the church in 1946. We are near the campus of the University of Virginia, whose early buildings were constructed in the 1820s by enslaved African Americans. And all of this is on lands long the dwelling place of the Monacan people. As we seek to make this a place of celebration and compassion, it is important to honor all those who dwelt here before and all those whose lives led to this moment of our gathering as a community of memory and hope. We are in a time of celebrations in many religious traditions. The week long observance of the Jewish Passover just began. Last week, was the Persian New Year Nowruz, and the Islam month of Ramadan begins in a couple of weeks. And the Christian Holy Week has begun. Today is Palm Sunday. Our greetings to you and your neighbors, whatever this time of year means to you. Today is also the final Sunday of the month of March, when we encourage each other to commit to supporting the congregation's ministry and each other during our annual pledge drive. Board member Jim Gorham is here to offer his greetings. Jim? Hello. I'm Jim Gorham, an at-large member on your Board of Trustees, welcoming all to today's service. Whether you are first-timers today or have been part of this community for a long time, know that each of you is welcome here today to this service, and we would love for you to join us after the service is over for some social time just by staying on the Zoom. As most of you know, and might be a bit tired of hearing, the month of March is our pledge drive and March ends in three days. And then so does our pledge drive. So please make your pledges before April 1st, no fooling. On one of my previous greetings right here several months ago, I told you I was actually looking forward to working on the pledge drive. And now that it's nearly over, I can tell you that this experience has been absolutely wonderful. Participating in the pledge drive has been such a spiritually meaningful experience. I am so grateful to have had this opportunity to serve our community in this way. 
It has deepened my bonds to this congregation and to our beloved UU community. The fire of commitment burns in my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Today on our service, we are grateful as always for the wizardry of Sean Scally, Julia Landis, and Caroline Hines who are working behind the scenes as technical support. And we are grateful to our video editor, Ellie Ransom for her talents. Christine Gresser will be sharing your joys and sorrows and Rev Linda is preaching this morning. You can find the order of service at uucharlottesville.org. Now let us join our hearts and minds in worship with these words from Elizabeth O'Connor. Every single one of us has a good work to do in life. This good work not only accomplishes something indeed needed in the world, but completes something in us. When it is finished, a new work emerges that will help make green a desert place, as well as scale another mountain inside ourselves. Let us gather the spirit together as we sing our opening hymn. We're the Eckhart Dirks family. I'm Dawn Dirks. And I'm Rowan Eckhart. I have been a part of this community for 19 years. And I've been coming to the church since I was born. My favorite part about our community is the sense of love and connection that we all feel when we're together. My favorite thing about the church is the friends I've made in RE. We light our chalice this morning symbol of our UU faith. We gather this hour as people of faith, with joys and sorrows, gifts and needs. We light this beacon of hope, sign of our quest for truth and meaning in celebration of the life we share together. We light this chalice to celebrate Unitarian Universalism. This is the Church of the Open Mind. This is the Church of the Helping Hands. This is the Church of the Loving Hearts. 
Our congregation's chalice has been lit and it will have its own screen throughout the service. If you have a chalice in your home, please light it now. Friends, in the ebb and flow of our lives, it is so important that we take time to mark the passages that give meaning to our days. Today, we celebrate and create a moment to welcome the newest members of this congregation. Jim? I am so happy on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the UU Congregation of Charlottesville to be here today to welcome our newest members. Ever since our founding in 1943, we have collected the hundreds and hundreds of signatures in our membership book, signatures of our members joining us over the past 78 years. This membership book kept safe at our church building also records births, marriages and deaths since our founding for these almost eight decades. The record of our membership is a symbol of who we are as a congregation, past and present. Membership in our congregation is an act of individual affirmation, an expression of commitment to the search for truth and meaning and a testimony to the power of this community. Good morning, I'm Christine Gresser, co-chair of our membership committee. The decision to formalize one's membership is a simple act with deep significance. When members sign the book, we offer what our ancestors call the right hand of fellowship. In pre-COVID times, we actually would shake hands. 
we would have asked all the new members to join us in this worship service to come forward to the chancel, receive that hand again, and be welcomed by the congregation. Today, instead, we offer this slideshow created and compiled by Kate Soderman on our membership committee and by Sean Scally to introduce these people who have joined UUCville in 2020 and 2021. Lenore Bajar Dukes. Lenore rejoined this congregation after she and her toddler, Francis, danced in the virtual talent show all the way from Pennsylvania alongside her parents, Linda and Frank, and her partner, Mahmoud. Since signing the book at 16, this is the only congregation of which Lenore has been a member although she has found home in many UU churches and now serves as staff at a UU congregation in Pennsylvania. Meg Dunham. Meg, her husband Jeff and their dog Hunter moved to Lake Monticello in September from Northern Vermont a beautiful state with very long and icy winters. Meg retired after 30 years of service with the State of Vermont Child Protection Hotline and Emergency Services Program, and Meg continues to work part-time for the hotline remotely. UUCville is one of the primary reasons Meg chose this part of Virginia to relocate to. Meg and Hunter are enjoying the many trails through the woods at Pleasant Grove Park. She and Jeff are looking forward to gentle kayaking, bicycling, and connecting with new friends. Fritz Hudson. Fritz joins us as a recent Seaville immigrant, but a long time Unitarian Universalist. He is Minister Emeritus at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, Nebraska, and an attorney retired from juvenile and immigration court practice. His Seville activities so far include the UUC Choir, court-appointed special advocate in local juvenile courts, the Seville Clergy Collective, and lots of outdoorsy stuff. Bob and Renee Brett. Bob and Renee have been coming here at UUCville since the early 2000s, raising their two sons in the RE program here as first generation UUs has been, according to Bob and Renee, a gift. They are recommitting to membership after a short time away and looking forward to being a part of the community again. Conrad Hines. Conrad joined as a youth member of our church because he felt strongly about being able to vote in the name change decision. He has grown up in this congregation as a regular participant in many RE programs throughout his childhood. He's now an active member of the YRUU Senior High Youth Group. He is 16 years old and a sophomore at Charlottesville High School. Conrad has taken on the role of groundskeeper since the passing of Jim Souter, faithfully mowing and grooming our church grounds each week. Neil Marin. Originally from New York, Neil came to Virginia to pursue his dream to teach. After spending over 20 years in the field of community recreation, he moved to Virginia to teach at James Madison University. His introduction to the UU world was in Long Island, New York, where he was a member of the Unitarian Universalist congregation at Shelter Rock. There, Neil served as chair of the Social Justice Committee. Susan Salco. Susan has been attending UUCville for seven or eight years and has been a member of a covenant group for at least the past five years. She has three fur babies, one of whom she adopted in our social hall after an announcement made during Joys and Sorrows. They all love helping her with her jigsaw puzzles. 
Susan has loved living in Charlottesville for the past 10 years and is looking forward to being a formal member of this wonderful community. I invite those of you who are members of this EU congregation to join in offering these words of welcome to your new members. The words are on the screen and I ask you to stay muted but read at home along with fellow board member Breck Gastinger. We welcome you as new members who have joined us this year. We are grateful for your commitment. We invite you to participate as fully as you can in the life of our religious community, offering your whole selves, strengths and weaknesses both to this tapestry we weave and ask you to do the same for us. Let us all join together now in saying these words. Oh wait, I think I should have read and I invite the new members to say this along with Breck. I apologize. We affirm the community we join today, its reverence for the past, its vision for the future and its passion to live fully in the present. And now, let us all join together in saying these words. We are one community. May these words and these acts of welcome serve to renew our covenant with one another. Oh, this is so wonderful to welcome these new members. And in our worshiping community this morning, we have with us, not only these new members, we have some first time visitors, some people who have been attending for a year or two, some people who have been here for five years, 10 years, 20, 30. We even have in this congregation this morning, worshiping with us, people who've been members for 40 years or more. I want to thank all of those longtime and continuing members for their ongoing commitment and ask them to join us in welcoming the new members. A little silent applause, if you will. <laughs> the congregation that you all are today builds on the congregation that you have been and both past and present will propel us all into the future of who you are yet to be. These new members we honor this morning are a valuable part of that journey. So we thank you for offering us the chance to listen to the hopes you have for the future. And we thank you for adding your voices to our voices. And here we offer a few of those voices, people who've been in the congregation and tell us now why they give thanks. We are the Shock family. Dave. Liz. Louisa. Alex. We have been coming to this church for one year and what we love about being a part of this community are the religious education classes and the weekly chance to step outside to our day-to-day -day life and look for a connection to something bigger. The thing I love most about church is um, serving food and serving coffee. I am that face behind the counter in the morning when you crawl into church and you need that first cup of coffee. Uh, it is my pleasure to serve it to you. And likewise with soup sundaes or elder dinner or the potlucks or any time that there's food, uh, it is my joy to be back there, not just because I get to eat first, but because I get to break bread with the people that I love the most. We are the Breeden family, 25 years ago. All of these children were raised in this community of faith, and it is what I love about this place. I've been a member of this congregation for over 27 years and have most loved calling this congregation my church home. My husband, Don, and I got married in this church about 27 years ago, and we raised our two girls in our religious education program and they have become very involved members of our church, as well as the Unitarian Universalist Youth Programming for our General Assembly. 
I especially love the long-lasting relationships I have formed with other church members over the decades, especially the members of my covenant group with whom I've been together with for 10 years and I call my best friends and I call them my mentors. I also love sharing the role of leadership with the other members of our board of trustees whom I respect and who teach me how to look at life's challenges with a different eye. Oh, we're the Little Good Love family. I'm Liam. I'm Chris. I'm Nora. I'm Tori. I'm Kieran. We've been coming to this church for about two years and what we love about it most is how kind and welcoming the people are and the values it is teaching us. I have been a member of this congregation for four years, since 2016. Um, just this spring, my husband and I were married in the church and my son was just dedicated there at the beginning of the month. Um, and I have most loved a thousand things, but singing with the choir, um, working with Impact to do some real social justice work, um, hanging out at Soup Sunday with, with, uh, with all of my fellow congregants and all kinds of other things. I am a lifelong UU, and many of you know that my children are fourth generation Unitarian. This liberal faith matters to me deeply. It has been a gift to my family for my children to grow up immersed in the spiritual freedoms of our beliefs, lifted and held by the loving experiences of our RE program here. My wife, Laura, and I have been members of this congregation for 19 years. And one thing that I love about this church is the way that it nurtures and grows amazing young people. And Laura and I are blessed to raise our two sons as part of this community. It is so important that as a community of compassion and caring, we share the moments in our lives which bring us joy or sorrow. We hold a time now in our service for that sharing of what we are carrying in our hearts. Today, we also acknowledge a national tragedy, two of them. Two mass shootings happened just recently Eight people died in Atlanta and 10 in Boulder. And our hearts go out to all those people in our society who are at the greatest risk of being targeted by those with hate in their hearts. Black people, Asians, all people of color, trans people, all those in marginalized communities. Our prayers are all one. We light a candle now for all the joys and sorrows shared this morning, but also for those joys and sorrows not spoken aloud. Perhaps they felt too big or too small to share. None of us are alone in our experience. As a community, we hold each other in each of our different places. Let us share a breath and rest for a moment. Amen.
Jeff, a beautiful piece. Every Sunday, we invite all our members and friends attending our community worship to contribute an offering to the ministry of this congregation. During our Pledge Drive Month, we have used this moment to speak of how we all can commit to the long-term health and future of the Unitarian Universalists of Charlottesville by making our pledges on financial support for the coming fiscal year, July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2022. Everyone is invited to make this kind of commitment. We've heard from children, parents, and longtime leaders. Today, we are delighted to welcome to our service a former member, Pam Phillips, whose experience in this congregation led her to enter the UU ministry. The first Sunday after I moved to Charlottesville, Virginia, in July of 1988, I sat down in one of the back pews of what was then known as TJMCUU. And that has made all the difference. It took me a few years before I was ready to sign the membership book, where you will find my name near the now Reverend Leah Derlin Jones, because we joined on the same day. It took a few more years before I began in earnest the journey that would lead me here to serve as the minister of the Unitarian Universalist Congregation in Blacksburg. And all along the way, it was the church in Charlottesville that taught me, supported me, encouraged me, and challenged me, which loved me into ministry. So much of what I have become is because of what I learned in Charlottesville. And it was in this church that I was married. And finally, when I was ordained. So you can see why this church is important to me. But the thing is, this church isn't important just to me or to you but to the wider Unitarian Universalist movement. One of the greatest gifts of this congregation is its work in the formation of religious professionals. Back when I was sitting in the pews, I watched ministers being formed with interns like Judy Wells, Todd Strickland, and Ed Piper, who served the UU Fellowship in Waynesboro. As I became more involved, I watched my good friends, fellow Dream Group member Susan Carlson and fellow worship associate Alex McGee, as they headed off to seminary. And then it was my turn. This fall, we celebrated yet another ministry nurtured by this church when we ordained Reverend Leah. I think also of some of the young people with whom I worked as an advisor for YRUU, who are now out in the world doing amazing things. Like Lenore Dukes, who is already a leader among her peers as a religious educator. Look around you now. Who among the current members, the youth, the children, will lead us all into the future. As much as I love this church, as much as you love this church, I encourage you to think about the important role it has played and will continue to play in the wider UU world. Think of the lives that have been and will be touched by those nurtured into religious professions by this congregation. As you consider how much you feel called to pledge this year, think about how your generosity will stretch far beyond Charlottesville. What an awesome legacy. What an awesome gift to Unitarian Universalism and to the wider world. I remember the first time I was in a new to UU class, some 40 years ago, 
the minister leading it asked the question, why would a person want to join a church? I thought it was a strange question, like why would you drink water when you're thirsty? Because I had grown up in churches and all my family going back generations had been members of churches. And even when I questioned what beliefs I had and explored other faiths, faiths or no faith, I'd always sought out and joined communities or sanghas to be connected with. It had never occurred to me not to join. But the question that minister posed and then listening to all the different answers people had to offer helped me to go deeper into myself and to realize choosing to be a member of a community is not always the obvious choice. And the reasons you would make it are many. Years later in seminary, I heard this, people come to church for ultimacy and intimacy, according to the great 20th century theologian, James Luther Adams. Ultimacy and intimacy are basic psychological and spiritual needs for any person. You know, people come to churches to wrestle with life's ultimate questions. Who am I? What do I believe in or trust? What community is mine? But they also come for a sense of intimacy, for a safe place in which they can be accepted while making connections with others. A faith community at its best does offer intimacy, that sense of knowing and being known, knowing that you're not isolated and your life matters. And a faith community at its best offers you a connection to ultimacy, the sense of wonder of the universe, the great cycle of planets and atoms, forces swirling, the wonder of birth and life and death. You know, intimacy alone is possible. You don't need a faith community to fall in love or to have friends. And ultimacy alone is also possible you can sense the wonder of the universe through your own meditation or just staring at the starry skies. But being able to have the chance to find these two together in one community, intimacy and ultimacy, that is powerful. That is meaningful. Now, when people come to a faith community like UUCville, they do come for many reasons, moral teaching for children, working for justice and social change, meeting people to have fun with, finding support through hard times like illness, divorce, retirement, death. All of these are good reasons to seek out a faith community for the ministry that it has to offer, yes. But then coming to a faith community is not the same thing as becoming a member of a congregation. So why would you join? Your bylaws say that a member can be any person who supports the purposes of the church and recognizes and understands the need of the church for support through financial contributions and active participation. Another way of saying this, I think, is that a member is someone who not only enjoys the ministry that's being offered to them, but a member is someone who wants to take part in being a part of that ministry and finding ways to support it and provide it. A great Unitarian minister, John Wolfe, once said, the only, there is only one reason for joining a UU church, and that is to support it, to support what it stands for and who it welcomes and how it teaches love and connects people rather than divides them to support it because it cares about human beings more than dogmas and it helps us all in our search for meeting. But you know, I read that John Wolf quote to somebody in a group I was meeting with this year and this one person said, I'm not sure I agree. The only reason to join a church is to support it. That person felt people join not only support a church but for what they receive. They wanna feel like they belong and they wanna feel like they can be a part of the ministry. And my thought in response to that is, yes, those are the reasons people come to a faith community. And there are reasons why people hang around. They, they stay involved and they enjoy what, offer, what it offers. But you know, our ministry is free and open to all, whether or not people coming are members, 
whether or not even if they agree to the EU covenant, people can come here and get a lot from our congregation without supporting it. So what does it mean to say you become a member to support it? For me, I started attending a UU church because of my family and I needed connections. But then I realized that I shifted inside of me feeling like I wanted to be a member of that congregation when they invited me to be a part of sharing in the ministry, teaching children, singing in the choir, pledging money, and making a promise to abide by the covenant. The covenant being that we support each other on the journey, we work for justice, we honor the independent interdependency, the web of life. Now we know that there are times in our lives when we cannot give money, we cannot find time to teach, we don't have the patience for meetings. There are times when we just need others to love us or make us meals. Can we be members in those times too? And this is why it's so important, yes, you can still be a member committed to the ministry, even in the times when you have nothing to give. You can be a member in all of the seasons of life. If you remember that membership means you're being in relationship. It's a relationship, not a transaction. A member is someone who has made the commitment to be a part of the community and stays in relationship whether they need to receive or whether they want to give. You stay in relationship in good times and bad, in joy and sorrow. You move together on this long and bumpy journey of our lives. That commitment to being in relationship is also supporting the congregation. A congregation is a network of relationships. It's not a transaction. It's not a club you pay dues to. It's not a business arrangement. We'll provide these services if you give us this much money. A congregation is an invitation to you to grow and to become fully human and to find agency in your lives, to be the actors, writers, and producers on the stage of your own story not just an observer paying for a ticket to watch what is happening to you. A. Paul Davies was another great Unitarian minister and he said once that being in religious community offers people the chance to grow a soul. In my mind, that phrase carries so much meaning. Growing a soul means helping people move from being consumers to being producers engaging with others, sharing their lives and offering ministry as a creative part of the world. And just as a parent hopes their child can grow to become self-aware, a productive part of the larger world, a congregation has its mission, the hope that each of us can find our worth, our dignity and our power to bring heaven to this time and place that we live in. We each have a part in this, helping all of us to find our worth, our dignity, our power to bring heaven on this earth. On this first day of Passover, a celebration which began at sunset last night, the story is remembered and told of the festivals of passages, the Hebrew people being spared from the angel of death, then crossing the sea of reeds to escape Pharaoh, finding freedom and surviving in the desert because of the miracle of being fed manna from heaven. What a powerful series of stories for the time we are in right now. We struggle to survive the plague and death from COVID. We sense that we'll be able to make it through the sea and arrive into a land which is only the next stage in our journey home. And it's not as close as we hope. We will be free in some ways, but we'll need miracles in other ways. Can we proclaim and claim the freedom that is the true hope of escaping Pharaoh? The freedom from feeling lost and powerless and subject to forces that we don't understand? I believe this is not only possible, 
I believe it is the mission of religious community to help each other, to commit to making the journey and supporting it through thick and thin. Finding the sense of intimacy on this journey to ultimacy. I wanna thank all the members of the UU Congregation of Charlottesville, those who are gone now, whose lives led to this moment. Those of you who have kept the faith with the commitment to move through this life together in good times and bad. And I wanna thank all of you who have become recent members, who've affirmed that it is the mission and a community worth your commitment. Your lives and your presence add so much to everyone. And I even wanna thank those of you who are here, but are unsure. Those of you who are seekers and people in need of patience, support, inspiration, answers. Thank you for being here too. Even if you can't commit to membership yet, because you remind us that we're a part of a large community and you give our commitments meaning. All of us, all of us are sibling travels on a journey. We can all be the light in our own way. And together, it's amazing what we can be. We offer and receive the sense of ultimacy and intimacy, and we help each other be that powerful light to shine in the world. May it be so. all the springtime festivals of the various world religions in this season, we're also doing this for the second time because COVID shutdown started a year ago. UU Charlottesville has been doing Zoom worships for a full year now. Kudos to you all and our worship tech and staff teams for making this possible. And for all of you who've been coming and joining us on Zoom to keep this going. Now, while many of you are eager and anxious to get back into your building and to be back together in person, we are waiting until the scientists tell us it's safe 
and until we can be inclusive of all people with their fears and health issues. So hang on there just a little bit longer. And as a gift to our new members, to all of the people who for a year have been holding us together, as a gift and as a benediction, I offer a musical treat now that's come to us from Broadway actors who have also been shot off their stages for a year. They sent us this song. It's a way of letting us know that there are many, many ways to measure the 525,600 minutes that are a year in a life. And let us remember the love that got us through this. So join me now as we extinguish our chalices and as we let the sun shine in on us all throughout all the seasons of our lives, even the pandemic seasons, we can do this.